is even better than in Toronto in the finals, this locker room. Like, first of all... Today, um, we're watching Fnatic and Misfits play in the third or fourth place match. Are you? Or we're scrimming. Not yet. We don't have any opponents. We don't have any opponents. Today we're making plans. Plans on how to defeat a unicorn. Unicorns of love. That's our opponent. I don't, I don't really know how they came up with the name. Um, but it's been serving them well. 213? Yes, thank you. Ooh, what do we have here, laddie? Eggs. Eggs and sausage. <laughs> oh, that's great! <laughs> Oh, last night? Oh, last night was so uh, exclusively uh, eight hours, seven hours. So it was really good. Oh, Q, Q. Oh. So they're watching the finals of LCK, which is the Korean league. So it's basically the best two teams in the world playing. So they're all just watching, trying to work out what they can take from it. Really, it's not good. I'd say right now SKT is probably better, I think it could easily go either way, but I think SKT or SK Telecom have won like the Worlds the last two times, so I think it has to be them, it's favourites. Is their play style different? I think just being generally better and just having a better overall grasp of the game and just how quickly they can teach each of their players is really what puts them ahead. I think mostly whatever, whatever they do, you sort of see filter through all the other leagues, like bit by bit. His teams go, oh, they're contesting this and this way. So everyone else just starts to slowly copy that and everyone sort of... So that's part of why they're always ahead because they are essentially driving what other people think are then good. Good morning. Morning. Mocha. <laughs> nice. Hello, Victoria. Oh, Whoa. 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 Wow, you guys. Whoa. You got swag and everything. Okay. Wait, I sit here. I think my table. <laughs> oh, they even have a whiteboard. Swag for the players. Swag for us. They have a freaking whiteboard, which says, by the way, to pick Nunu, which is a horrible idea. What do you think about the. Uh, this is insane. They told us we had like locker rooms, but I didn't picture this. This is actually really sweet. Especially with like player pictures and set up. It will look really cool with like the player shirts, like an actual sport. That's really sweet. Mm. And it's just like it's just like in every other locker room when when uh, when we pause the game and somebody has to go piss, like everybody can hear it. Like whatever you're doing in there is public. Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, well, there's storage there. Hey, you guys, we have a sauna. You know? Serious? Yeah. Really? Let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna catch up with you. So, uh, no one wants to scream. Where is life? Where is life, plans? I'll take care of you. Oh. His is patched. 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 Okay, let's go. Let's find the center group. Okay. All right. Hey, let's do it. Yeah. Because there's. It's good to just have it. Yeah, I can. Is this the arena? Yeah. You want to get more? Much more. Just in time for us to do Okay. I'll be there in like one sec. It's gonna be a theater in the round. I'm excited. I think this is the only way eSports should be, is like like a boxing ring. You know what I mean? Look at this. 
that's one of them. Team huddle room. <laughs> they, do, they do the team huddles in here and they set up the backdrop so that like in between the games when we're doing strategy, it looks dope on the, on the live feed. This is, it's at events where you can tell that Riot's like company motto, player first, and it really like is fully in full effect. Because like, like the, one of the reasons that people love being pros so much for, for Riot and playing League of Legends is because it's like such a, it's so amazing. Like the way that the events are constructed and made is like, it's for the fans and the players, number one. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's really yeah, awesome. Nice, you send up? Essential, <laughs> essential <laughs> tools for any eSport event. If you're a fan and you're coming to an eSport event, bring Sharpies. You need a black one for shining stuff that's light, and you need like a silver or a gold one for shining stuff that's black. Life of a coach, everybody gets to go and do the tour, and I have to stay here and patch their clients. By the way, if you're a coach and if you're a coach and you don't do this, you're a bad coach. You should always try to enable your team to do as much as possible and take as much off their plate as you can. The way that you develop mental resilience and mental growth is basically by uh, like figuring out what it is that they're capable of one level on top of that that is like beyond what they can do, right? And that is their stretch goal and you help them like progress through and like push against those things. Catering, this way. This free steak is gonna be better than the steak I paid 58 euros for yesterday at that crappy restaurant. Let's, let's, let's check. It's like 10 times better. I had to pay for it yesterday, 58 euros. 58? For that food. You serious? No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Really no. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see the receipt? Yeah. <laughs> it tasted like a dirty grill. Uh. Meet Alexander. I met him a couple years ago when he interviewed me for his YouTube channel. He saw the stadium like blocked off on the yeah, right here. Yeah. Like there are big trucks everywhere. Is there anymore? 
<laughs> no. Um, My prediction is 3-0 TSM C9 tilts after losing the first game. Contracts. This is, there's so much hanging on this. You know what I mean? Like, this is G2's only chance to go international and redeem themselves. If they don't win this match tomorrow, they can't actually leave Europe and go and redeem themselves for their international uh, failures that they've had in the past. So it all hangs on this single match. And before they can even go and do the thing that they want to do, they have to not lose tomorrow. Not only that, but they're not coming in as the underdog. Unicorns of Love is obviously coming in as the underdog, and they're coming in really, really hot, and really fierce, and really desirous to win. So the players are really feeling it. They're feeling the pressure, they're feeling the nerves. We just have to see what's gonna happen.